Hey traders, is the cowboy. Welcome to YouTube and Elliott Wave Cafe. This is episode 20 of Bitcoin and Ethereum Elliott Wave Analysis. Let's get started. All right, if you want to get in touch with us, you can find us on Telegram at the Elliott Wave Cafe. Up there, there is a public chat. There is also uh, this kind of public channel. There's a premium room as well. And then you can also find me on Twitter at Elliott Cafe. So uh, with that being said, let's kind of jump onto the charts. And uh, Bitcoin up here on the weekly chart still looks uh, pretty bullish. We're slowing down slightly. We haven't done a lot of activity since we've talked a couple of weeks ago. You know, I've tried to maybe modify a little bit this advance here in this larger third wave primary i think you know that wave it's, it's completed at this moment and we're working this fourth wave um, we haven't made new highs yet i'm still thinking there's possibly a running triangle happening in there you can see that bitcoin is struggling to break the trend remains up however we're continuing to look larger in this larger third wave cycle so that can take us you know uh, near a hundred thousand maybe even a little bit higher so we still have to complete overall, I think, this fifth wave. I think this is still, uh, you know, undeveloped just yet. Clearly, this is a clean up trust here in this larger third wave. I still think it's got a couple of legs up to go. Uh, but for right now, Bitcoin is consolidating. If you look, you know, for me, an important level to the downside would be this 43,061. And until this level gets taken out, I'm not going to be... I'm not going to turn necessarily bearish on Bitcoin just yet. So I need to let it develop. The price continues to hover near the all time highs. You know, this tell me, tells me they're trying to break that ceiling. There might be a little bit of a rejection, maybe heavy selling up there. People are trying to defend those levels. Uh, but for right now, the market, it's it's just, um, you know, hovering about right, right, right at those levels. And there is no there is no point in arguing with that. For right now, the trend remains up. We have a little bit of a divergence here on the weekly charts. It's obviously, you know, we're trying to to do this, this maybe fourth wave in here. Uh, but, uh, you know, we can't really argue with the price. For right now, it's elevated. Uh, let's take a look at our two-day chart in here. You can see my level here, 4361. So I'm always watching as prior swing lows, right? When we're in an uptrend, we're looking at higher highs and higher lows. And as long as that pattern continues, you want it to stay and trade in the direction of the trend. You know, this kind of helps you, um, you know, have an extra edge on the market, right? Because you're basically uh, trading as the price is moving higher. So again, this divergence here is slightly concerning. Um, and, you know, we're losing momentum as we're continuing to make new highs. Uh, but we haven't gotten any confirmation from the price. So I'm, I have to continue to stress that I still will start to take some of the swing lows in here. We just have to, to respect the price and just assume that something that it's in motion will continue to stay in motion until something knocks it um, you know, out of there and just sends it back down. So in terms of the subdivisions in here, right, this is wave cycle, this is the primary, this is the intermediate. So you go one, two, this is another one, two in here with a larger trust here in this larger third wave intermediate, pull back in this fourth, up in five. And now I think we're working this fourth wave uh, triangle um, into these levels. It's, it's really, really, you know, it's a really kind of awkward setup. You know, you could have it, you know, where it actually sells off this way and then you continue to drag sideways. So, you know, there's several ways that this can unfold and it's and it's really, you know, uh, tough to nail exactly the pattern. Um, so I'm giving it as much room as it needs to kind of breathe and continue to, you know, to prove me that it deserves to move higher. Um, you know, for right now, we really haven't made new all-time highs. You can see that Ethereum actually did is a little bit stronger and we'll get to that in a little in a, in a little while. For right now, you know, Bitcoin, I think it's, it's continued to, to act pretty strong in here and, um, you know, it's going to knock that ceiling as much as possible. But if it doesn't, we're going to fall in this fourth wave and I'm pretty content with that. Until we start to break below this 43, uh, you know, I'm going to be I'm going to be fine. The moment if, if anything happens, let's say, you know, and in the next week we're, we're selling off aggressively here, you know, then I would have to obviously, you know, still give this fourth wave a chance to develop but it's going to get a little bit large compared with this wave second right and that's going to be somewhat problematic and that's going to kind of get me thinking maybe this wave three cycle is complete um the reason why i'm giving this this uh, move up here a little bit more room to develop um it's because i don't think um that a cycle third wave it's in it's 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 got enough room for a way for uh, to kind of work from these levels, right? So if you look at it in a one and a two, and then this is what I'm getting in the cycle wave third, 
the moment you're going to have to do a fourth wave to the downside, it's going to have to be pretty large. So we're going to compare it with this wave second, right, which took, um, you know, almost a year to develop back in here, right? So if we're going to get something like that, it's probably going to have to be some kind of a triangle um, so we can stay uh, away from this wave one high, right? Because the moment we would break or we would come close to those levels, this would be an awkward looking pattern. Right? So the only way I would accept that if this is going to be some kind of triangle and it's going to be more of a sideways moving here, right? That's why I'm thinking that this has a little bit more room to go just so we can give that fourth wave a lot more room to develop. Being a triangle, being a flat, being a zigzag, whatever it's going to be um, remains to be seen. All right, let's jump to the next one here. And this is the moving averages up here on the weekly charts. The trend is clearly up. We're above the 21 day, we're above the 50, we're above the 200 week. In here, 200 week, it's a you know, major defense, continues to climb, right? Every single week right now, it's at about 10,620. Um, you know, the 50 is at about 20K. So these are kind of major defense levels. Uh, if the price pulls back, the 21 week right now, it's at about 38,000. So that would be a level to watch. You can see in prior bull markets, it offer really, really good support. So, you know, even if you just want to place buy orders at those levels and you know go to sleep and you know maybe one night something happens and your orders will get filled right so keep those in mind uh, if you wanted to kind of pick bitcoin on the cheap those would be levels to try and then obviously you know you would have to i'm, I'm talking you know probabilistic here but uh, you know you would obviously if that happens you would have to watch you know how the price action reacts and if you continue to sell off obviously you got to get out of your position but you know, those are good levels to kind of enter on a long term basis. Uh, taking a look here at the daily charts as well, you can see the 200 day moving average is about 29,000. So, you know, if you look right, it's it's pretty much, um, well, it's actually a little bit lower than the 21 week. So, uh, uh, and then 50 days at about 20. So up here, uh, you have 200 at about 29,000. So that's another strong level. We've climbed about 170% above it before we pull back you can notice that every time we get over the 200 percent elevation above the 200 day moving average you're starting to get a little bit of a pullback you know something that's a little bit more significant if we were to measure from these um from the levels where 200 day is right now to where let's say 170 180 percent that would take us to about 75,000. so that continues to be maybe a near term target where the markets could travel and then pull back from there um, one more time so you know, I, i'm continuing to watch this we're above the 50 you can see how it just offer very nice support we're above the 21 day moving average as well so there's no reason for me to be bearish until some of these levels start to be taken up so for right now things continue to look good up here on the weekly uh, candlestick patterns you can see how um you know you've gotten a rejection there for about from about 50,400 and um, the, you know there was a pretty nice you know tail uh, onto this closing of that last week and uh, since then the price is trying to push up higher what I have back in here maybe you remember from a couple of weeks ago I have a time analysis of the distance traveled in this wave one and then also on the distance travel on this wave one to the wave second and what I'm trying to compare in here is three versus one plus two and three V one. So on a three V one, this is the line that's here below. We've passed 161 uh, Fib distance traveled, uh, which was back in January 29. Um, you know, we're going to be traveling about 200% here on April 18 um, in this larger third wave, right? So that's going to be about twice the time that we've spent in this wave one back in here um, those gonna be an important level to watch and then if you kind of climb up higher you'll see distance travel from one through two so this is where wave one kind of started all the way to the second and I'm kind of giving a fifth time on there as well and that's a little bit higher and we will be traveling about a hundred percent of that distance uh, on June 13th so that's another kind of uh, target that I'm watching on this uh, that bullish development and then you know we'll get some you know other fib uh, zones up here 261 multiple that's probably going to be you know somewhere in august as well so um I, i'm incorporating the time analysis as well just to kind of tell me you know just kind of keep me uh just kind of keep me looking into the future and where the price could travel based on this on this fifth time and just uh, gives me a little bit of a better understanding not to 
you know, um, let's say get too excited about getting there too fast or, you know, um, like how much, how much more time I actually have until I get um, uh, to equality or to, you know, twice the time and things of that nature. So um, that is, uh, you know, that's Bitcoin uh, for you in here. Let me show you a little bit of the seasonality as well. And uh, let me see what's going on here. Why am I not? Uh... Oh, I got to get out of my uh, markers in here. That's the problem. There you go. So <laughs> sorry about that, guys. So I am um, on the seasonality on Bitcoin. And you can see up here, this is what's going on in April. April is a pretty bullish month. Uh, March was one of those months where you are actually, um, you know, trending more negative in Bitcoin. Actually, you know, this was one of the best years for Bitcoin in the month of March. We've gotten a little bit of a sell-off, but not too much. And it ended up being, you know, quite a positive month. But April actually, um, seasonally here between 2014 and 2021, you could see that it's uh, in average, right? It's a pretty nice positive month. It starts kind of slow and then it picks up a little bit of a momentum. There's maybe one, two, three, four years here that uh, the market was, uh, um, you know, even more, even more bullish. If you kind of go back, I think that was uh, 2018, maybe, and then you look maybe uh, even last year it was pretty good into the month of um, of April. There were a couple of months here that were negative, and I think this was 2015 and maybe 2014. Uh, but in average, you know, it looks pretty good. So we've got the season also on our side. So hopefully this, uh, this month of April, we're going to be able to break through those levels and continue to push to, uh, to new all-time highs in Bitcoin. All right, let's uh, jump over to Ethereum and take a look at this and see where we are. So on the weekly time frames, Ethereum broke to new all-time highs last night. You know, things continue to look good. We've been, you know, we've been bullish on this thing. Um, you know, for quite a while, even in terms of outperforming, it, uh, Bitcoin actually looks pretty good. And, um, you know, this level of 1422 that we've reached back in 2017 provided support on the way down. So even on the first breakout that we've had back in here, uh, you know, the market kind of came back, retested that level, and then it moved back to new highs. Now, you know, could you really trust this breakout? You know, it's hard to say we could still be in a fourth wave. Uh, triangle and I'm talking about this fourth wave intermediate. If I'm placing a, a third wave in here as an alternate, this could be a running triangle. I'll show you in a second. But overall, I think we're still targeting this here at about 3,700 to 4,900 in Ethereum. These are pretty nice upside targets uh, for this, um, you know, larger wave intermediate, and then also for uh, the primary count in here, this larger third wave. Remember, we gotta finish. We gotta finish this wave. You know, first this smaller third, and then this intermediate third, and then you got to finish that larger one as well. So that's why I think you know we don't have a lot of worries in here until we're getting into those levels in Ethereum. And then obviously, you know, on even a larger time frame, the bigger cycle third wave that will still take time to develop. That is this back here. So we're going to have to do a fourth in here that's going to match with the second. Um, so overall, I think we're still in a pretty bullish cycle in here before we get more of a let's say meaningful decline in this in this fourth wave cycle so jumping uh, a little bit lower here to a two-day chart you can see kind of what i was watching what i'm saying here the triangle triangle fourth is still possible what i'm referring to is a running triangle so similar story as in bitcoin this could be an a this could be a three wave up in b you can do a c a d and an e and you can still kind of move sideways like that right and that would be let's say this fourth wave in here that's going to develop and I would have to place this third back in here. And then, you know, that will give you then the next fifth wave, which is this back towards again, towards the 3,700 to 4,000 zone. Um, but let's say that this, um, you know, third wave, it's already complete. Um, and you're actually moving up here in this fifth wave, right? That's, uh, that means that this is a wave one, right? This is a wave two. And then we're in the middle of this larger third you know that's developing right now you're going to do a four and then you're going to do a five and then you're going to kind of shoot the targets up here for this uh for this larger first wave so a couple of scenarios in here um you know it's um you know it's a nice breakout i think uh you know let's see if it's going to get sustained if we're falling back we know it's going to be a triangle i'm watching this 1294 um, you know as a, as a key level to the downside uh, whatever this was in here you can go ahead and look at it as well that's another key level that could be watched in case we're kind of selling off 
for right now, this continues to look, you know, nice and bullish. And I think Ethereum um, actually outperforms Bitcoin at the moment. So uh, we remain uh, looking higher on there. Moving averages are looking good as well here. You can look at the weekly charts, right? We're clearly above the 21 week, above the 50, above the 200. Um, so clear uptrend. You know, the RSI here, it's elevated. It's, um, you know, diverging just slightly. But I mean, you're above 50 in the RSI and you're actually right there about, you know, right above, right at 70 level right now, possibly on the weekly chart, which is, which is an uptrend, right? You can see um, like, you know, back in here when the RSI kind of started to move and you started to do the breakout, right? That the relative strength index kind of stayed the same about those levels. And, uh, you know, that's an uptrend. For me. So, you know, people that, you know, have, have issues with the RSI and saying that it's overbought and this and that, it's, you know, that's not really what it tells you. It tells you that the market is strong and then it's in an uptrend and you want to respect that as much as possible. You know, along with the counts, along with the moving averages, you want to stay on the on the right side of the market. Even if you're selling off and the RSI gives you a chance that it kind of comes back here towards 50 or even 30, right? Those uh, could be good levels to join if you're actually hitting some of the moving averages on the way down. Uh, let's take a look at the daily. Pretty good in here. We've climbed about 190% you know, a few weeks back and, and we sold off. Again, I'm watching kind of the same distance in here. I think it's still premature. We still have you know, quite a you know, quite a bit to run before that level will get hit. But, you know, we got rejected from the 50 day moving average from the 21, we broke the new highs, we remain in an uptrend. So that's uh, that's pretty bullish for me. Um, the next one in here is, um, I wanted to take you uh, to a little bit of the rotation. So this is the benchmark. I have Bitcoin in here in the center. And then um, this is Ethereum. So this is kind of how uh, it goes in and out of favor versus uh, Bitcoin. And, uh, um, you know, you could see that for the past 36 months, uh, this is kind of where we came. We were, um, you know, pretty weak uh, relative to, uh, to the benchmark here, Bitcoin. And then we kind of weakened and then we came back into improving quadrant. And right now we're leading. So for the past, um, so this is kind of going back a rotation for the past 36 months, right? So you're looking at three years of price action coming, you know, in and out of favor here uh, versus Bitcoin and Ethereum. And for the past one, two, three, four months, you know, we've actually been outperforming uh, Bitcoin. So Ethereum was just um, a little bit stronger and uh, it continues to look that way. We're losing a little bit of the momentum in here, but in terms of relative strength, we're, we're, uh, we're up and to the right. And, uh, uh, you know, this continues to remain, um, you know, in favor versus the Bitcoin until this changes, the story changes. It's a similar story here on the weekly. This is a price action over the past 36 weeks. You can see how, you know, we've been, you know, leading and outperforming um, a Bitcoin here for, for quite a while. Then we lost momentum and we lost momentum. We came here into the weekend quadrant. We went back here um, into the lagging right here at this moment, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, basically from this quadrants in here Bitcoin was outperforming as Ethereum started to move up here into the green we started to lead back and you know we, we were pretty strong in here let's say going back uh, one two three four five so prior five weeks prior and before you know this was a pretty strong momentum and then we start to lose the momentum a little bit right now and we're coming back here towards the center. We're still outperforming on the weekly basis, but we're losing the momentum. Relative strength continues to look pretty good. We're up and to the right again. And if you look at the dailies, right, you can see that loss of momentum um, it was a little bit better seen in here. This is kind of going back 60 days, right? So you were kind of weakening and, and, and getting back here into the lag, lagging. Uh, Bitcoin was outperforming at the time. And, um, you know, then you got it back into the improving, you lost a little momentum and now you push back with the breakout. Uh, we're back here and outperforming. So basically on all the quadrants, Ethereum right now, it's outperforming Bitcoin. And, you know, this has got a pretty good momentum. It's moving up and to the right. I like the heading which stores north, northeast in here and uh, continues to look good. Now, if Bitcoin uh, starts to break and Ethereum takes a pause, in here Ethereum will probably kind of pull back and come back, either go down or, or move back here um, into the lagging quadrant. Who knows, right? But for right now, um, you know, this is the place to be. It's, um, it's Ethereum at the moment.
so um guys uh, this is uh, this is it uh, uh, you know thank you for watching and um, listen you can find me uh, you can kind of type this into your browser it will take you straight to my bot and it will take you to our uh, um you know the pro room in there uh, there's a seven day free trial there's no car required you can kind of come and see what we're doing the only thing that's not available to you is the seven hour course that's available on a basic subscription but everything else you can come and check it out there's a charts channel there is uh you know there's a chat room there's a main channel there's there's a stock channel as well where we talk about stocks and um you know uh, there's a, a lot of information there where we cover markets kind of all day long from bitcoin and altcoins and gold and oil and all the other stuff we go on there you can see this is kind of our menu in there we have uh, you know throughout the day updates and commentary and again this is kind of all that we offer in there right and then this is what's in the course if you wanted to kind of take it and this is actually wrong it's uh actually free if you're subscribing um you know on a monthly basis you you have access to that so um you know all the chapters are in here you can really dive in and there's about a seven hour again um, and just really, really uh, get into the meat of, of what's going on into the Elliott Wave. Get used with all the structures, you know, with the impulses, diagonals, zigzag, flats, triangles. All of that stuff is in there so you can get up to speed on that. So again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and share the video. And I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. And then I should have uh, some more stuff next week, maybe some stocks. And then a week from today, we should have the Macro Cafe where we cover Again, gold, oil, and interest rates on the dollar and all the other stuff that's kind of from a macro perspective. So I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.